He has one question. Hello, this is Justin Decker and Matt McDonough here with the Division II National Championships at the Alliant Energy Powerhouse here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We're getting ready to start the 125 pound national championship match here in a couple minutes. What a great venue here, Matt. I mean, this this is just, they're really doing it up here. Great for the Division II championships. Exciting place to be tonight. Justin, this is a great environment. Cedar Rapids is a wrestling town. I was born and raised here. I've been in this venue many, many times, and they always do a great job. Um, it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here for the Division II National Finals. Tonight, we started off at 125 pounds with sophomore Jackson Roman taking on also sophomore Brendan Garcia of Adams State. Jackson Roman from Augustana defeated two-time national champ Cole Laya previously in the tournament to make the finals. Brendan Garcia beat James Joplin, the number three seed of Lander. Here comes out Jackson Roman, Augustana. He's coached by Jason Reitmeyer and Chisholm Fink. He's gonna be wearing the red ankle band. Central Oklahoma is leading the team standings, running away with this tournament this weekend. 113 points in first place. Second place, Lander has 78 points. Third place, Western Colorado with 61 and St. Cloud State trying for that team trophy. They're, they're a half point behind Lander with 60 and a half points. And here comes Brendan Garcia, a sophomore from Adams State. He's gonna be wearing the green ankle band. He's a four time Colorado State champion, it's Fargo champion. Two time Greco champ. So we could see some uh, fireworks tonight in the upper body throws out of Garcia. He actually also wrestled a season at Wyoming. So he has Division One experience. Expect this to be a, an intense, uh, exciting match. Garcia actually went to the 2018 Worlds as a training partner for Whitney Condor, the female wrestler. Justin, you know what I love about these 25 pounders? You know every one of them loses a little bit of weight and they are on full feed. This is an entirely different scenario than their day in and day out match scenario. Yeah, I lived it and uh, these finals, they're exciting as a 25 pounder because you, you really get a let loose. If there's anybody that knows what they're going through right now, it's it's my partner here, Matt McDonough, three-time or three-time NCAA finalist at 225 pounds for the Iowa Hawkeyes, two-time NCAA champion. Hawkeye legend here. It's an honor to be here with you. There's a nice, oh, nice front headlock from Garcia. He tried to throw, but he missed it. Tried a little shuck there. And, yep. uh, a lot of good action there Went early right on. right back to it. He's holding it. We steady. A little bit of... A little bit of uh, flurry early in the in the session. Jackson Roman coming in with an 18 and five record. There's a shot out of Garcia. Roman sprawls, puts himself into a front headlock. They clear. And, you know, early in the match, these guys feeling each other out, kind of seeing if there's any explosive scores they can get. I'd like to see him put them their hands on each other a little more. There's Garcia looking for a super duck. Again, a little bit of cat and mouse game. Walk us through what these guys might be going through, you know, the day of the tournament, the day of the national finals. What's what's going through these guys' minds right now? You know, You've been here. What's impressive about Division Two and, and three nationals is they these guys wrestled the semifinals this morning. So it's not like they had all day to think about this. Nice shot by Roman. He's on the single. But Garcia hangs on to that far arm. Nice They're still going, no score yet. They're, wow, Roman does a roll through, but Garcia hanging on to tough position, getting him in the danger zone here. 
Well, and that was real close to a takedown Roman, there. Roman manages to scramble his way to a leg hold, and he's going to hold on for this stalemate. You know, that's smart wrestling. I, I'm kind of surprised they haven't already called the stalemate. There it is. Okay. Wow. Talk about some gritty wrestling out of Roman. Just for a split second there, I thought it was very close to a takedown, but... Uh... Listen, Jackson Roman just was at 95% taken down probably three different times in that sequence and just continued to scratch and claw. That's what I love about college wrestling at all levels when you're in the finals, when you're in the big matches, as there are no easy points. And that was Roman's offensive attack. You know, he... Uh... He was in deep on that single leg. Garcia fought it off. Got yeah. he's, he's, you can tell he's good with I'll that shot. I'll tell you shot. what, Garcia. He's tough with that front headlock shot. He did a great job hanging on to the trail arm so Roman could not get his hands locked. It's something that uh, is not utilized all the time. Um, a lot of people can, you know, just they go straight to sprawl tactics, straight to uh, trying to work the go behind, but. Garcia, before anything, he grabbed that trail arm, and, and Roman couldn't get his hands locked. And then he looked for the reattack. And, uh, you know, I credit to Jackson Roman. He he just did not give up and got himself into a position where now we're 0-0 with a minute left in the period. Cleaning up a little blood right now from Brendan Garcia. There's athletic trainer Matt Rukert, one of the best athletic trainers in the country right there from Upper Iowa. You've got to wonder where Roman's head's at after after beating this morning a two-time returning champ. I mean, the confidence you have to finish the job. But then on the reverse, you have Garcia, who's you know a previous D1 wrestler, a two-time Fargo champ. He's, yeah, you you know, gotta, he's got something to prove here. you got to look at Garcia probably as the favorite, coming in as the two seed. Absolutely. Roman came in the tournament as the five seed. But, but like we said, has already knocked off the defending two-time champ. Scoreless here, 50 seconds to go. For I noticed period. that Garcia is just calm, cool, collected. He, he's not over-pursuing. He's looking for opportunities, but he's not putting himself in bad position trying to force a score. I'd like to see if Roman goes back to that single leg. You know, and, and there's a distinct uh, length advantage for Jackson Roman over Garcia, but Garcia, I'll tell you what, he's explosive and he is calm, cool, and collected. There's Jackson with another single. Garcia right to the front headlock. And he is hanging on that neck hard. I mean, he is vicious with that front headlock. Garcia, Nine seconds left in the period. Garcia coached by Jason Ramsetter and Chewy Demison. He's a one-time All-American himself. What's interesting tonight, Matt, is all of the upsets that have taken place in this tournament. In the in the semifinals and quarterfinals alone, four defending champions got beat. There is only one number one versus number two matchup tonight of all ten weight classes. You don't see that very often. That just shows you how tough these uh, these tournaments are, these national tournaments, and especially at the D2 and D3 level where these guys don't always get to wrestle each other throughout the season like happen, what happens at the Division One level. Um, and so it's, I mean, it's a firefight every single match here. Garcia, Garcia with, a, with a clean escape. Great hand control there. It's good position. Got a quick 10-second escape for the 1-0 advantage. I, I think what I notice here is just Garcia, you know, even though they're both sophomores, he's, he's comfortable. He's been in these matches before. He's staying calm, cool, and collected, looking for his opportunities. But I tell you what, Jackson continues to use his length to go after that lefty single. I gotta love it. I gotta love it. You might get a stall warning here from Garcia. I think one more one more offensive attack from Roman, and I think you're gonna see a stall warning given. It's, we'll see. It's absolutely possible. Um, one thing Garcia has done well is he's stayed in the center and he hasn't backed up. But you know, you're you're absolutely right. He has not really made a lot of attempts other than early in the match. There it is. There's, there it is. Wow, there's the stall call. Jackson Roman in deep. Garcia cutting the corner. 
Now well, Jackson coming up through the middle. Trying to put Putting him in Garcia some danger here. Into danger. Garcia scraping through it. Jackson with the takedown. That's uh, just some gritty uh, wrestling. He rides him out here 20 seconds. That's going to be huge. Garcia needs to get an escape here going into that third period. Crucial. There and he, he gets it. it. I tell you what, Garcia, he is explosive. He, he needed that escape. He wanted that escape, and he went and got it. And now we end the second period, two to two. Now, Roman does have 29 seconds of riding time. Garcia takes neutral. It's tied. That is an interesting call. You know? He has 29 seconds riding wait, time. Wait, Roman. Oh, that's right. Roman took that. Yes, that's – I'm wondering, you know, Garcia must have a pretty strong top game. You know, I, I haven't um, seen him a lot. Hey, Garcia getting warned for going across the throat. I was wondering about that. He was doing it earlier. That's and a lot of confidence taking neutral third period tie match. Well, Let's you know, Roman's continued to, to attack, continue to be on him the entire match. It's uh, it's an aggressive call, but when you're feeling the momentum, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame him. Roman continuing to work on that left-handed sweep. And again, he scored on the right side. So he's hitting that lefty sweep, but that, that may open up the right-handed shot. You know, Roman's probably an attack or two away of, of maybe Garcia, getting that stall you know, call. If, if Garcia wants play. to win this match, bottom line is he's, he's got to get to his offense. Nice snap out of Garcia. He's working on the push out. Now we're in the front head. 55 seconds to go. Tie match, two to two, 54 seconds to go here. 125, Jackson Roman versus Brendan Garcia. I feel, who do you, you know, both these wrestlers, you know, you got. You feel like one maybe has a little more Mind in the you, tank right now? Garcia has a stall call. Right. He's going after it here. There was his attempt. I tell you what, these spurts, every one that Jackson fends off, that's that's power, that's that's energy in his tank and away from Garcia because that's what Garcia is looking for is a quick explosive score he drops down again and I tell you what Jackson Roman is just wrestling gritty we're gonna see overtime I think here just 15 seconds to go gritty Let's what a great way to start the night these oh guys look at this at look at this Garcia but no he's got it yet. he gets it wow Incredible score. Just like he was shot out of a cannon there. Match by Brendan Garcia, and he wins. What a level change that was. He and saved he his best attack for the end. Excited. Congrats to Brendan Garcia of Adam State. Adam State of Colorado. You bet. Brendan Garcia, sophomore. Gets a takedown with just seconds to go. He is your 125 pound NCAA champion. What a way to start these Division II championships. Wow. Unbelievable double leg there for Brendan Garcia. We're going to go to a quick interview of our NCAA champion over here on the side. We're here in Cedar Rapids at the Division II NCAA Championships at the Alliant Energy Powerhouse. Great crowd on hand. We'll be back at 133 pounds. Second period, you didn't look affected at all. Going to the third, tied two to two with your escape. What did you need to do? Where was your head at? And what ultimately got you to the finish? Uh, I felt him getting a little weak there at the end, and I just stayed on the gas pedal. I knew I needed one. Started started off a little slow. Couldn't get my offense going there at the beginning, but I told myself I wasn't leaving here not a national champion. Awesome, awesome. 
you've been in these matches before. You've won two Fargo titles in Greco. You know, you've, you've wrestled at the Division One level. What has that done to spur you to this moment tonight? Uh, I think it's done a lot. You know, just uh, being used to being on these stages. Just, yeah, just being used to it already. You looked calm as ever. Congrats, 125-pound national champion from Adam State, Brandon Garcia. We're back at the NCAA Championships. What a way to start these championships at 125 pounds. It don't get much better than that, Matt. We got 133 pounds coming up. I, I give credit to both men. I'll tell you what, Jackson Roman knocked off a two-time returning champ to make the finals. He put everything he had out there, and Brendan Garcia stayed calm, cool, and elected the entire time. Got his shot at the end, awesome stuff. Coming out right now, we have Quinn Campbell from Shadron State. He's 19 and one on the season. He's a junior. He's gonna be wearing the red ankle band. He's gonna be wrestling the number three seeded wrestler, Gavin Kiyoko, a sophomore from Glenville State College. He'll be wearing the green ankle band with a 37 and five record. Here comes Gavin Kiyoko. I tell you what, Quentin Campbell, Kiyocho. Gavin Kiyocho, two great athletes, a sophomore, a junior. Campbell 19 and one, Kiyocho 37 and five. One exciting thing about Quen Campbell, he is one of the first two national finalists from Glenville State. They did not have an NCAA Division II All-American before this season. Kiocho and later tonight, Cam or sorry, Kiocho and Campbell later for Glenville State became the first two All-Americans. We are ready to wrestle at 133. Quinn Campbell is a junior college All-American for right here in Iowa at Nyack College. Took fifth. Oh, look at that little dresser dump right off that. He's got that locked up. This could be a quick fall if he gets that he's, locked up, he's, man. Look, there's the cradle. There is the inside cradle. He's got him on his back. This is going to be tight here. He fought out of it. Yeah, wow. Gavin Kiocho with no near fall out of that. The Glenville State College out of West Virginia. He beat the number seven seed from West Liberty, seven from to three. West Liberty to make the finals. Kiocho coached by Dylan Cottrell. And Jonathan Andriata, Quinn Campbell coached by Brett Hunter from Shadron State, Tegan Smith, and Emmanuel Scott. Campbell got here by majoring the number five seed in the semifinals, Flannery of Millersville, 15 to five. So he can put up some points. Don't see many dresser dumps anymore like he did back in, that's kind of, you know, Kevin Dresser out of Iowa State, obviously the coach there. Both kind of made both that of new. Both these men are first time All-Americans. Both of them are super regional champions. A lot of good hand fighting what, going on right now. <laughs> Kiyocho is one stacked 33 pounder. It's, it's hard to, to, to gauge height from up here, but 
Um, Campbell's definitely got three or four inches on him Obviously, at least. Obviously, Campbell's the tall and lanky 33-pounder, and Kiocho's the short and stocky, and it showed from that first sequence. All that flurry, all that action, and we're we're two to one. Um, I think he's fortunate he he didn't maybe give up a lot more there. I mean, uh, that was know, close to uh, that was just being mentally tough from Campbell. I mean, he he could have easily going for oh, the double nice unders. Nice double unders to a body lock to an overhook. No score went out of bounds. Well, that think, was quite the quite think, the look. I think we sequence. saw where he likes to be comfortable there. I mean, he's he got in that double unders and uh, oh, looking dangerous for a little there. low ankle. I feel like Campbell can kind of lull you to sleep a little bit. He kind of just stays out of his stance. Kind of. Uh, he, he's definitely dangerous. I mean, he just ripped two double unders and then an overhooked Kyocho to his back, mind you, out of bounds. But that that all happened in a sequence of five seconds. So we're going to end the first period, most likely. Two to one. There's some Campbell good, looking, there's some good looking for some little quick scores. I like that. I mean, you know, Campbell notices the end of the period. Little sprint, see if you can score a takedown. The beauty of a takedown late in a period is it's so hard to get that escape back. So you're essentially, you're getting a two-point advantage right away. Whereas Kyocho got an early takedown and, I mean, almost had a chance to pin Campbell and it's only two to one. Campbell's going bottom. Kyocho looking to ride tough now. Oh, they're looking for the suck back. Campbell has him over top on his right side. Should be able to get out here. He's not really got nothing it's on certainly him an advantage, but I tell you what, Kyocho is not riding light. He is looking to just Tell he likes that tight waist. Uh, we're, we're at 45 seconds, and Campbell's back on his belly. So certainly Kyocho is looking for for a one-minute-plus ride, and he is uh, he is doing that. Nice mat return there. Little. Oh, end to a oh, nice a scramble. Getting... Nothing yet, though. Nothing yet. No points. That was a great lift and an immediate great uh, Gramby roll right into Kyocho did a nice job wrestling through that position. He was in danger there I mean, after that, the Gramby. That was a textbook Gramby right into a Peterson. Kyocho and we're at a minute and seven riding come time. out of that still in the top position. He's very fortunate. Just uh, uh, continue to wrestle. The grit of both of these men to not let up. This is what I love about finals matchups. Is you know, it's the big stage. Nobody is going to give up easy points. See you, if he gets you are going to have to earn every here. point you get. Yep. Yep, Campbell gets his escape. A minute and 25 of riding time for Kyocho. And they, wow. Oh boy. And they hit Kyocho. What for do you think stalling. about that? I, think, I don't know. You know, he was going out of bounds. He looked like he was circling in, and, and this is where the rule is imperfect, is now you've created a rule where it's supposed to be straightforward, but sometimes there's gray area. It looked like uh, Kyocho was circling in, but you know, no points yet. But now Kyocho has to be a little aware that he's on the clock. Quinn Campbell, one of the, I believe, one of the – Four number one seeds in this tournament that are still alive. Campbell coming in as the one seed from Shadron State. Mind you, again, Kyocho, the first finalist ever for Glenville State College. You know, Division II wrestling has really taken a step up in the last few years. I mean, it just shows how competitive it is with all these lower seeded guys. Kyocho guys. choosing bottom. There's just a small margin of error once you get to this tournament from, you know, number one through 12. You know, oh, absolutely. Good return from Campbell. Great return. Now, you know, Campbell looking to ride him hard. So he gives up the escape. There's a minute 10 of riding time. He's now down by a point. 
essentially two, but if he scores a takedown and puts on a tough ride, he's ahead by one. I think the key for Campbell, he's got to get his hands on him, try to get back to that double under position he had earlier on in the match where he almost scored out of bounds on Kyocho. There's a... And they hit Kyocho. So we are now tied three to three. Kyocho has a 10 second advantage. So he does have the lead, but any more stalls and now we're looking at a tied match without even a takedown involved. And I tell you what, you want to talk about momentum, Campbell has all the momentum right now. He has all the momentum. This is this is where Kyocho needs to. Yep. There this he is, is where Kyocho wants to oh. seal it. He's staying in the middle, but he, Kyocho, I mean, essentially, Kyocho has been now hit. Yeah, he, he knows he has to wrestle. He has to be offensive. He cannot hold center and counter, counter, counter. And they warned Campbell for, I, I think, being in the face. 34 so seconds to, to go, 34 three to seconds. three. Kyocho with a minute 10 riding time. That's going to come into play if, that, if this match ends that way. He'll get the additional point. Campbell looked for some fireworks here late. A shot. Another shot by Campbell. Campbell going after it. He can't back out of bounds here. This is big because if he shoots him off and he does not hold center, and, and they're not gonna hit him and he wins. Gavin Kyocho, your national champion, <laughs> winning on riding time, four to three. The first All-American and the first national champion from Glenville State. Special moment here, folks, in Division II college wrestling. You see the emotion with Gavin Kiocho and his coaches in the corner falling in their arms, sobbing in happiness. This is what it's all about here. Gavin Kiocho, national champion, 133 pounds. Matt McDonough is going to have him for the interview. Correct me if I'm wrong, first ever All-American, first ever finalist, first ever national champion for Glenville State. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's awesome. What does it mean for you to lead the way for your college um, and, and your team? It means the world. Just because we're a small school doesn't mean we're not out there grinding and we're not out there doing the best that we can do for each other and glorifying God. And it's just everything that I wanted in a program when I was looking for a school to go to. That's awesome. Take us through this match. So you came out hot. You're looking, looking for the fall. Things didn't end up that way. And then, I mean, you're, you're essentially, you're grinding out for the win at the end. Just take us through your mindset at the beginning of that match and at the end of that match. Uh, I, I knew he was lanky, so I wanted to do the Jeff Jordan Kobe at first. It got me the takedown, maybe not the fall, but uh, it worked, so. <laughs> well, congratulations. You looked awesome this weekend. You looked awesome tonight. Go celebrate. Okay, thank you.
In fourth place from Lander, All-American James Joplin. In third place from Western Colorado, All-American Patrick Ellis. Your runner-up at 125 pounds from Augustana, All-American Jackson Roman. And your 125-pound national champion from Adams State, Brendan Garcia. Twenty-five pound all Americans. at 141 pounds. Welcome back to the Division II NCAA Championships here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We've had two outstanding matches to start off these championship matches. Hasn't gotten any closer than what we've seen tonight, Matt. And I tell you what, looking at 141 here with Christian Small and Zachary Donathan, I don't know, Zachary Donathan's coming in. He's got three falls. He's only wrestled two minutes and 54 seconds in this tournament, very dominant. We'll see if he can continue his dominance. But Christian Small, the number four seed from Lake Erie, looking to stand in his way. He's already beat the defending champion, Brower from Lander College. He's got the red ankle band and the white singlet on right now. Look at the length he's got. He's six foot one. Six foot one hundred and forty one pounder. I this tell you what, you don't see that every day. A short individual, but Zachary Donathan is the definition of dominant right now. I can't even fathom what this man has done. He's wrestled and three times and hasn't even wrestled a total of three minutes. Both in this of these tournament. men are out of Ohio. Correct. They drove all the way to Iowa just to scrap with each other. I love it. Zachary Donovan, Donovan, the junior in the gr green ankle band from Tiffin. Wrestled at Ellsworth here in Iowa as a, in the junior college was a finalist. Zachary Donovan has a little bit of experience with Iowa wrestling. Russell for Ellsworth Community College. Coached by Tony Guerra, Nate Hagen, and Zach Thumb. Christian Small, coached by Boomer Fecchio. Darrell Brown. You know, he's been... Donathan working on a two-on-one right now. Both of these men, relatively tall for 141, lanky, lanky gentlemen. Christian Small, I mean, he's got a size advantage over everyone in this tournament, more than likely. Saw a little ankle pick attempt there. I mean, a long, lanky guy like that, you gotta, you gotta think that might be one of his go-tos. Both men, juniors. 
Christian Small, 26 and two. Zachary Donathan. You know, college wrestling, you know, you know how hard it is to get a fall, let alone a fall in the NCAA tournament, and not one but three falls yeah, in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I've had a tournament. couple and never, never managed to get more than uh, a few each year in the opening rounds. To get one in every match. I mean, you'd have to think he's probably the, the favorite as, as far as an outstanding wrestler of the tournament right now if he could continue his dominance in the championships here. But uh, Small came in the four seed. Donathan, the three seed. Very evenly and matched Small, two-time All-American, so he has experience here. Obviously, Donathan coming from Ellsworth. Um, you know, he was a finalist in JUCOs. He's an Ironman champ as a senior, which one of the toughest tournaments in the country in high school. A little bit slower, a little bit more um, tactical out of both men, I would call it. Neither men made a, made a serious attempt. A, a lot of hand fighting, but, you know, no. Donathan's got a lot of length himself. You know, he's no, he's he's a pretty tall 140-pounder you know, himself, and he's probably still giving up four or five inches out that there. That certainly helps him against a guy like Small. Just thinking about the matches I've seen and wrestled in, um, being a little longer for your weight is certainly helpful. And as a taller athlete, you certainly enjoy wrestling short people. And so for Small, he's got Donathan, who's also pretty tall. And, you know, Donathan's got pins. Uh, this may, this may be a uh, risky territory for small. Beautiful setup here in Cedar Rapids. This uh, venue is just I feel like that the fans Donathan. are on top of the action here. It is a, it is a very intimate environment. Donathan hanging on with a tight half, but small all the way to his feet and Donathan lets him go. And what Interesting to me, Donathan, he, he continues to, to look back at his corner. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a specific game plan or he's, he's looking for uh, reassurance, but he's looked back to his corner a couple times here. There goes Small making some attempts. Both men just super comfortable, just staying relaxed feeling each other out you know I'd like to see a little more aggression out of both of them a little more risk but this is this is in essence the, the NCAA finals yeah. no one wants to be the person to make a mistake to lose the match yeah they both seem a little bit timid on committing but there's a there nice, is single a nice from shot by Donathan and he is looking to finish but small using that length to his advantage just being hard to wrap up Donathan still working a score. We're in a seatbelt scenario. Small with a whizzer, keeping him on the squares up. You can see there. Donathan Small. has a chance to shoot him out. Small's trying to circle in. Donathan just mirroring him. Oh, he should have. They, right there, he needed to come at him for a shot. Probably a third of the entire mat circumference. And Small finally got back center. And Donathan with an inside trip. To a takedown to end the period. Oh, that was pretty. Talk about slick mo movement, and he goes straight to. You said it earlier. A tilt. Getting a takedown late without without giving up that escape is huge, right there. Donathan going on his feet. He's got a two to one lead. You know, I, Small really hasn't 
threatened Donathan at all during this match. So it's he's going to have to come up with something here. You know, he's got to wrestle with just a little bit of urgency here with a minute and a half to go down a point. There's been no stall warnings given. Yeah, if Small if Small wants to get himself to, to win a chance to win this match, he's he's got to make an attempt. He can't rely on Donathan making the biggest mistake, but I tell you what, he's got double unders here. He's got his hands locked. He's got Donathan in a very uncomfortable spot, but Donathan just wrestling smart. He's got a stagger stance. He's got his elbows down. Now he's working to clear the front head. Small continuing to keep him underneath, wearing on him. <laughs> Donathan's about to go to a three-point stance. He's staying right in front of him. And we get a stalemate. 51 seconds to go. Two to one advantage for Zachary Donathan. You know, Donathan's just, he's wrestling a smart heads up match. Small, he's got to make some magic happen right here. He's got 45 seconds. I don't foresee Donathan making a, a, a big movement, making a big attempt. Just 28 seconds to go. There goes Small dropping in on a leg, and we go stalemate. Donathan was just hanging. And this is where Donathan could just maybe stay away a little bit. He can, he can afford giving up a stalling warning here and just play it on the safe end, I think, and that's what he's going to do. Yep, Donathan takes his stall call. He is moving. He might, he's got to be careful here. Right, right. he can't back right he's out. He's got to be careful because, I mean, Wow. The national champion from Tiffin, Zachary Donathan. Had three falls coming in, but it went the full seven minutes here for a two to one victory. He's just a junior. He'll be back next year to defend his title. So right now, Christian Small's coaches are challenging the stall call, I believe, at the end of the match. To my knowledge, I am not sure whether you can challenge that. Now, this is not a stall call that is based on ref's choice. This would be a stall call for backing out. I... If I had to guess, I would think that they're looking to see if that happened within the time of the match. And the ref's coming back to the middle. No stall call. Great match by Christian Small and Zachary Donathan. Zachary Donathan. You're a 141-pound champ out of Tiffin. Three pins in the tournament in a total time of 254. wrestler probably in this division two tournament thus far coming in with three falls hadn't even been wrestled three full minutes coming in a little different here walk us through that match i mean this is the third time we've wrestled i've kind of got great coaches so i know what they're doing and he's kind of pieced up a game plan just knew we had to get a takedown because he couldn't take me down that's how it worked out beautiful inside trip there is that your go-to yep absolutely what do you got to say to your tiffin fans Man, go Gons, baby. Congratulations, your 141-pound national champion, Zachary Donathan.
Fifth place from Millersville, All American Devin Flannery. In fourth place from Mercyhurst, All American Eric Bartos. In third place from Central Oklahoma, All American Dylan Lucas. Your 133 pound national runner up from Shadron State. Quinn Campbell. And your 133 pound national champion from Glenville State College, All American, Gavin Kiocho. Back in Cedar Rapids, the Division II National Championship match. We're going to be here at 149 pounds. Coming out on the mat right now, the number five seed from Western Colorado. He comes in with a 31 and five record. He's going to be wearing the red ankle band. He's a senior, Jason Hannenberg. He comes in with a 7-1 decision over the number one seed. Ely from Pitt Johnstown also has two pins in this tournament. Been extremely dominant. Talk about a solid tournament thus far. He's coached by Charlie Pfeiffer, Donovan McMahill. Those guys were tough back in the day right there. I think a couple, couple national champions in his corner. His opponent the number two seed from Adams State out in Colorado. He comes in with a 26 and three record. He's gonna be wearing the green ankle band, the black singlet. Josiah Ryder, he's a junior. He is your defending NCAA champion. Your championship officials for this battle Western Colorado has a couple finalists tonight. Adam State has a couple finalists tonight. Western Colorado, this is a big match for them. This is a big matchup. Talking earlier, St. Cloud State, uh, a perennial powerhouse, is in fourth place. A little bit of a letdown in the tournament. They're only a half a point out of third. They have two finalists. Western Colorado has two finalists. So there, there's a lot to this matchup with Hannenberg wrestling Ryder. If he can knock off the defending champ, that is massive for Western Colorado. Now, Josiah's Ryder's teammate earlier in this tournament at 125 pounds won the national championship, Garcia. So he could potentially join his teammate as the second national champion of the evening for Adam State. Looking to tack on a second national title to his resume, Josiah Ryder. Both wrestlers just uh, not a lot of offense early on here. Hannenberg coming in the five seed. Josiah Ryder, your number two seeded wrestler. Hannenberg's a three time national qualifier. Your super six regional runner up, one time All American. A little bit of a interesting trivia on Josiah Ryder. He was the national champion at 157 pounds last year. His teammate, Noah Hermas, Hermasio was at 149 last year, and they flip-flopped. Hermasio got third, 
at 157, and Ryder is back in the finals, but this time at 149. Oh, interesting little tidbit. Yeah, you don't see that every day, do you? No, certainly not. And I tell you what, he does not look small for 149. Neither does Handenberg. A little bit, a little bit more intensity here coming out of that blood time. Halfway through the first period here, scoreless. Handenberg's pressing him, but tell you what, Ryder is, he is still quick on his feet, explosive and strong. He's in a front headlock here, wearing on Hannenberg. See, this is a great position. Low, low tax for the man in the front headlock, and to get out of that front headlock takes effort, and it's no fun to be there. Yeah, I look Ryder the just continuing to work this position. Now, the one thing that I don't love about the front headlock is if you sit in there too long you just lost yeah, you essentially got, 30 40 seconds yeah, you got to instantly move the guy once you get that hold I and mean, you, you know it, to, for some people that's fine but we want to see scoring let's be honest uh, the fans i tell you what the guy i i used to love from that front headlock position and you know him well mark ironside oh, when, he, when he got a guy there he just moved a, him he bounced him and he, and he was so well, fun to he, watch there. He learned from the best. Tom and Terry Brands, they were masters at punishing people underneath and scoring points. And it's certainly uh, some of the Iowa style of wrestling, which you got to appreciate here. We're in eastern Iowa, Cedar Rapids at the Alliant Powerhouse. Going to have a scoreless first period. You know, I expected this to be tight. Hannenberg. You know, he, he won 7-1 to one over the number one seed in this tournament. Has two falls. Win. I mean, that's decisive. Yes, yes it is. Hannenberg elects to go down. Josiah Ryder with a nice crab ride. He's got a half, and he's deep in the crotch. He's not quite pulling him. You can tell he's, he's comfortable he, here. There he goes. Now he's got a leg in. He really likes this crab ride. He's enjoying it. He's got a wrist now. He's keeping his tip, hips Hannon in work, tight but there. I tell you what, Hannenberg has his foot, and he loses it. Now he's up to his feet. Hannenberg up to his feet, but oh, man, got Ryder. Cradle locked up. Ryder's got a cradle locked up. They're on their feet. I'm interested to see where this goes. There it goes. Ryder puts him to his back. And he now has a four count, and he is looking. There it, there is. it is the, the fall. fall for Josiah Ryder. Wow, what an impressive win for Josiah Ryder. Josiah Ryder, Adam State, two-time national champion, with the cradle and the fall over Jason Hannenberg scoreless match going into the second period he locks the cradle up he puts him away josiah Ryder, congratulations 149 ncaa division two national champion You won this tournament last year at 157 pounds? Yes, sir. So you dropped down to 149 pounds this year. Is there a reason helping a teammate? I see your teammate, he got third at 157. You have another teammate who just won it at 125 pounds. Um, talk about that team aspect and, and what it means to be a national champ for the second time. Oh, man, that's pretty neat. Um, uh, when uh, Last year I got hurt right before nationals at regionals. I told all my family not to come to the tournament because I probably was going to go two and out, end up winning the whole thing. So they decided to come this year, so I'm excited to see them. That's what's up. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm excited for Brendan. I'm excited for our team, how well we did. We got guys at home that should be here, and everybody else should be on the podium that didn't this, this week. Talk about that sequence in the second period on top. You're riding tough. You know, you, you go to the crab ride. You're looking for opportunities. 
and all of a sudden you lock up a cradle. Yeah, that's the same cradle I hit last year in the finals. Uh, it's the same move I've hit since I was like 10 years old. So whoever showed me that move, thank you. Hey, if it works, keep it rolling. Congrats, Josiah, national champion for the second time, 149 pounds. Hearst All American Jake Niffenegger. In sixth place from Belmont Abbey All American John Carianus. In fifth place from Lander All American Zeth Brower. In fourth place from Drury All American Peter. Custer. In third place from Central Oklahoma, All American Nate Kime. Your 141 pound runner up from Lake Erie, All American Christian Small. Your 140 We are back for the finals at 157 pounds. Coming out of the red corner, representing the Greyhounds of U N D. Taking the mat right now from Indianapolis. He's 33 and four. He will be wearing your red ankle band with the red singlet. He's your number five seed, Logan Bailey. He's a three-time NCAA qualifier, All-American a year ago, taking sixth. He's coached by Indianapolis head coaching staff of Jason Worthen, Dawson Combest, and Ivan Lepchinski. His opponent, St. Cloud State. He's unbeaten. He's 26-0. Nick Novak. From the perennial powerhouse. Well, run DMC coming out. St. Cloud State, Nick Novak. Nick Novak. The Huskies travel well. They just snapped like an 89 meet, dual meet streak a few weeks back here, or months back with Wisconsin Parkside beat them. They're Parkside, always in the team standings. Nick Becker, friend of mine. That's that's a big win for them. I tell you what, it is a hard thing to do, and Nick Novak is coming into this finals undefeated. He's a two-time qualifier now. He was a region champion. What would it mean for him? and his team to end his season undefeated. They are a half a point behind Western Colorado. So this, you want to talk about an important matchup for his own legacy and his team. Right here is a great opportunity for him to, to make, some, uh, make some statements. Novak coached by legendary coach Steve Costanzo, Brady Wilson. In the corner over there, great heavyweight out of Minnesota State, Mankato back in the day. Costanzo's won a pile of NCAA championships. and There's some action. Scrambles. Wow. Talk about some good flurries out of Novak and 
Bailey. Good chain wrestling going on right there. Bailey with the 33 and four record. Novak undefeated, like we said. You know, St. Cloud in a different role this year, you know, they, they expect titles up there. They, they you know, I'm, I'm assuming they're probably disappointed right now that they're not one of the top one or two teams, but uh, this still means a lot right here, putting these guys into third place. St. Cloud State is a perennial powerhouse. It is a big, big deal for them to come away with a trophy. Uh, you know, not being a, a thoroughbred of Division II wrestling that has um, a lot of historical knowledge, I do know that St. Cloud State is a tough school. You know, as, as soon, actually during the time of UNO when Nebraska Omaha had their reign, you know, St. Cloud State very, very closely kind of took over the reins of dominating this division. And, Novak almost scored early on in the match, but uh, not a lot of action the last minute and a half of the this period. There's 36 seconds to go. First period, we're scoreless. Believe. Just had confirmation. I believe it's Novak. Novak. Okay. The, the same as the grade school I went to. So might be doing a little rooting for Nick Novak. Eight seconds left. You know, I don't know how many first periods we've had. Scoreless, tight, tight matches. Yeah. But, uh, man, these guys are super stingy first period. Yeah, I tell you what, these finals have really uh, blossomed into quite the crowd. It's exciting. Yeah, this is, I, I love this atmosphere. Oh, they I need to have it back in Cedar Rapids more often. Yeah, I'm going to say that right now. Intimate. Novak starting the second period on top, goes straight to the crab ride. Now he's oh, almost has a leg in. Bailey trying to sit him to his hip, take the leg. I think Bailey is kind of looking for a, a reversal opportunity here and it, we haven't seen too many there's a stall warning there on Novak surprise there hasn't been a stalemate I'm a surprised that they haven't called a stalemate because you know Bailey is holding and then they stalemate it you know I think the I think our referee here did a pretty good job you call him the stalemate, but you also notice that Bailey's holding the leg and not trying to escape. You don't need to call another stalling call. Stalemate that. We go back down. And ultimately, Bailey, you know, don't look for stall calls. Look for escapes. Like right here, look for escapes. That's, That's a big it. escape there with 50, 51 seconds riding time. Absolutely. One minute to go. Second period. Bailey. On top, one to zero, in the red ankle band. Novox continuing to stay active, but neither man has really had a deep shot opportunity. Back in that wizard position here. Novak down on the ankle here. He's gonna, if he can bring him, well, he's lost it. Novak went one and two at this tournament last year. Obviously, Logan Bailey finishing sixth. So you have one athlete who's undefeated, the other one with four losses, but our wrestler in the red, Bailey, is the one with All-American experience. So both men highly motivated to continue. St. Cloud fans looking and for a stall warning. Bailey for stalling. They got it. So we have a double stall in here. Both men have been called. Both men have been warned. Wow. 
Interesting. Talk about this is. Are you trying to, to kick the field goal and? That's twice. The, that's twice we've seen that. Yep. You know, early kick, on tonight we saw. It, yeah, you know, kick the extra point and go to overtime or go for the win now. And, and maybe there's something we don't know about Bailey, but wow, nice. He goes from a seatbelt to a leg attack to a takedown. And he's got it. Mind you, he has 55 seconds and counting of riding time. He's Nick got Novak, <laughs> this is huge if he can continue to manage this ride. And realistically, even if Bailey gets out, he still has a lead now. Both men with the stall call. So Novak has to wrestle this smarter. Now, on the edge, where do you want to be? You want to keep him in inbounds. You want to keep your leg in. You want to keep him in bounds. You want to flatten him out. There's no need for a restart. You can see him continue to work to the center. You can see Bailey fighting his way out. And that's that's smart wrestling by Bailey. He's giving himself a chance. He's finding a way to get a restart. He's he's a 20 seconds here getting riding time locked in too. That would be crucial if he could ride him at least for 21 seconds here. Novak with the lead and riding time. That's big. That is big. Riding time locked up. So essentially it's a three to one lead. And I tell you what, Novak is not showing any signs of letting up. Tough ride in there. You know, I think he's, he ain't going nowhere, Matt. I don't think he's no, going. He's, he's got, got a wrist and a bar, 15 seconds. This is how you want to end a match. Oh, my goodness. You don't want that, but I tell you what, he's got all the momentum in his favor right now. 14 seconds left, a two-point lead. Essentially, he could cut him and hold center of the mat. And that good. That's a good attempt by Bailey, absolutely. Hats off to both of these men. They certainly let it fly the whole tournament. Bailey got himself in a tricky situation. Novak, he's hanging on and he will there it is. win. Nick Novak, your NCAA champion. 157 pounds. He completes the season undefeated, 27 and 0. Nick Novak. Quite a big win for Novak. That will push his team above Western Colorado for the time being with a matchup for Western Colorado in the finals to rebound right away. So some exciting team race happenings here for third. I'm probably not the only person in the stands here that was questioning you there. Third period, you're down a point. You know, nine times out of 10, that guy goes down. You choose neutral. What's, give me your thought process there. Yeah, I know he's pretty tough on top, but I don't know. I just knew I could keep that pace on him. He gets hard, and I get that takedown. I believe that just moved St. Cloud up a spot in the team standings there. Let's give a, give a wave over to your fans there. What do you got to say to them? Uh, you guys helped me every step of this way, and uh, I couldn't do it without you guys. Your 157-pound champ, Nick Novak.
In fourth place, from the University of Wisconsin, Parkside All-American, Jalen Spuler. In third place, from Northern State University, All-American, Wyatt Turnquist. Your 149-pound runner-up, from Western Colorado, All-American, Jason Hannenberg. And your 149-pound national champion from Adams State University, All-American Joe Sia Ryder. NCAA Division II National Championships. We are at 165 pounds. We got a great match coming up. We have the number eight seeded wrestler from Western Colorado. He's a senior, he's taking the mat right now with a 26 and six record. Got a couple big wins over Gantz, the Number one seed from Parkside. We have Hunter Mullen here in the red ankle band. He was an All-American taking seventh place last year. We get, he's gonna be wrestling Chase Lunsman from the host school here, the Upper Iowa Peacocks. 31 and three record. He comes in as your number three seeded wrestler. He's having a very dominant tournament. Hunter Mullen at the eighth seed, I believe, is your highest seeded wrestler in this tournament. Coming to the mat from the green corner, representing the Peacocks of Upper Island, Chase Marilyn Manson. Chase Lunsman grew up probably 40 minutes from here, Matt, Monticello, Iowa. I can about imagine what's going through his head right now. You know, I'm sure he's got a lot of family and friends here. You know, he's got a high motor. He's fun to watch. Yes, sir. A little bit of hometown pride here out of Lundsman. He's coached by Heath Grimm, taking the mat right now. Jordan Rose, Jordan Rinkin. Coach Grimm's been a Division II National Coach of the Year a couple times. Peacocks, he's a senior. Lundsman's a senior, but, I, you know, I think he's coming back next year with this, this COVID year these guys get. Lundsman's put together. He's a, he's a nice-looking 65-pounder. Yeah, he is not a small fella. I look for Lundsman to have a lot of heavy hand fighting, set the pace early. Mind you, Mullen from Western Colorado is, he's not only wrestling for himself, he's wrestling for his team in this match as well. Lundsman wrestling for some, again, some hometown, hometown pride here. Pretty big deal to, to win on your home turf, so. So a little low, low single Mullen ankle pick there. a nice shot and gets the takedown quick. That might be, the first early takedown we've seen in a minute in these finals. Quick escape by Lundsman. And I tell you what, you said it, Justin. Lundsman's got a motor. He did not waste any time getting an escape. Yeah, he's a guy who can, you know, he could probably wrestle for an hour straight and not get tired. And, uh, you know, he's got a 
He's got to impose his will on that guy, though. You know, he's got to. Attempts the, the duck under. Mullen working that front headlock. He's got his hands locked. He's squeezing on him. Here, Coach Grimm saying, get past those hands there. He's trying to, you know, get to his attacks. But uh, there's a there's nice single shot. take attempt. And a, that's a great counter by Mullen. There. Again, he's on it. There is a good, oh. good reattack. Basically, shot, reshot, reshoot, the reshot. Just continue to drive through That's, there. He looks strong there. That was chain wrestling there to a T. Kept a low center of gravity and just continued to so, drive through him. With that takedown, we have a lead change. Lundsman now on top with a 3 to 2 lead, and he will ride with a minute 23 left. This is the most action we've seen in a first period yet. This is exciting. Nice changeover by Mullen, and he's out right away. I tell you what, these two guys are not letting up, and you enjoy to see it. Another nice shot by Lundsman. Got to bring both back up to his feet. Got to bring both arms of that hands yeah. to that leg, though. He's leaving that, that other. That's a good safe single. You know, if it's not there, you don't lock. But you also have to wonder if he would have committed, would he have got in deep and got himself a chance to score? I, I, you know, I get the sense that Mullen, he, he wants to slow things down a little bit, keep it on his terms. And just like you said, Lundsman, man, he wants to make this a brawl. He wants to make this a knockdown drag out. Yeah. You, you, hear, you hear Coach Grimm over yeah. here talking about pace, talking about slowing, you know, don't not letting the opponent slowing him down here. I think that's crucial in a match like this. And Mullen just staying comfortable, staying in the center. Now, the one thing I've noticed is Mullen, is, as he's circling, his feet are, are coming a little bit close. There's some openings there to snatch a single leg without a good sprawl attempt by Mullen. If he can time his shot, Lundsman. I'm curious to see if conditioning comes into play in this match what because... A, what a great first period. Mullen is going to have to maintain that... I don't think he's got the gas tank that uh, Lundsman has, but we'll, you know, let's we'll find out. Mullen coached by Charlie Pfeiffer, Donovan McMahill. There is another nice, nice escape by Mullen. Great changeover right to his feet, and he's out. Four to three advantage. Hunter Mullen, he's a senior. 26 and 6 record. Nobody expected him to be here. A little kind of a boot scoot type duck, duck, uh, duck under action there. Lundsman dominant on his way to the finals. He's outscored his opponents 25 to 9 to this point. So looked very dominant. Both men have previously all American. Mullen, the more recent one, last year. Big stall warning there Lundsman against Mullen. Gets the stall call on Mullen, and Mullen is absolutely going at it right now, almost to, to kind of right the wrong of getting that stall call. And back to the center. Both of these men are, I mean, they are not letting up. Four to three, Mullen leads, but... I don't know about you, Justin, but I don't think that's going to be the last score of the match. No, and, and Lundsman scored a lot of points in this tournament. You know, he won by, you know, 10 to 5. And, you know, he, he's a take, he's, he can rattle off a lot of takedowns in a match. He's been pretty decisive on all of his wins in you know, this I, tournament. I think for Lundsman right now, he just got to continue to attack. He slowed his attack rate down a little bit. Whether, I, I don't necessarily think it's fatigue, but he's just there. See, that, that has to happen more and more. And they are in a tight position with 15 seconds left. He might get near falling. Oh. looking for the takedown, and he scores it. So he will take a four, a five to four lead. And to have finish choice. finish out the second period with choice. That is a great finish. That's how you finish a period right there. 
Well, now the question is, what is Mullen gonna do? How long does he ride him? I don't imagine for long, but you know, he may give it a shot, may look to see if there's a, a quick turn he can snatch. So essentially, this is on Mullen. He has a stall call, and he's behind by two. He has to go. Lundsman is in the driver's seat here. Yeah, I tell you what, if I was Lundsman, I would continue to attack, and he... Uh, there's saw an inside trip attempt, and now uh, Mullen... Mullen's good with that inside trip. You know, you gotta Lunds, watch out there. Lundsman looks strong. Mullen's been trying some of these shots, and I mean, it's like he's attacking a stone wall. Ever since that first takedown, he really hasn't gotten very close yet. There's a on nice, nice re-attack by Lundsman. He stays low, Mullen comes back into him, and he goes straight to the takedown. You can hear this crowd excited, certainly, uh, Hometown advantage for Lundsman. Eight to four advantage. One minute to go. Lundsman continues to score points here. Lundsman holds a three point advantage here. No stall calls. Let's see if he stays offensive. What do you think here, Matt? He's going to go on the defense? You know, I think. I, I, th I, ha I, I would have to think he's going to continue to shoot when he can. He just doesn't seem like the kind of guy to not shoot. There he goes again, dropping in. And now, you know, he's hanging on. He's, he's strong on those single legs. 33 seconds to go. He's got an eight to five lead. Mullen, he's, he's starting to breathe heavy, but I imagine we're gonna have a sprint to the finish here. He's not gonna let up. Now, if Lundsman rattles off a takedown here, he, he ices this match. 25 seconds to go, there it is, that's his. That was a nice, yeah, Mullen's just too high. And Really, Lundsman, he can give up the score here, but is Mullen gonna cut him? He's gonna cut him quick. Talk about some excitement. We got 10 seconds left. He's gotta just stay away and be, be safe here. Yeah, Lundsman, smart, smart wrestling. There it is. Way to go for Chase, Chase Lundsman, Lundsman, your national champion. Pointing to the Peacock fans. A lot of Upper Iowa fans in the house tonight. Big smile out of Chase. Boy, this is a pretty that special night for this guy right here. Great match by Bull. Great match. With that win, St. Cloud State will seal up third place. So inadvertently, Lundsman helped St. Cloud State secure their trophy for the tournament. He had a lot of fans tonight. Five pound champion, Chase Lundsman from Monticello, Iowa. What, 30, 40 minutes away here? How's it feel? It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable, I mean, for, for my family to come and bring all their friends, all their family, my coaches, my fans, my teammates. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible feeling. You're high paced. You know, we talked about it over there on the broadcast. Your high pace just kept kept getting to him. That takedown at the end of the second period was probably the turning point. Absolutely, 100%. I agree with you there. I mean, just staying on the gas pedal the whole time, not giving him room to breathe. That's that's how I wrestle. That's what it's all about. You gotta you gotta know going into a match against Chase Lensman that you're gonna go seven minutes hard each and every single time. You and your Upper Iowa teammates are like a band of brothers, I know that, okay? I know how close you are with those guys. I want you to turn around to section 224. I want you to, what do you got to say to those people? Hey, we love you guys. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting each and every one of us. You guys are incredible. 
Chase Lundsman, 100 and... From Shippensburg, All-American Adrian Shea. In seventh place, from Central Oklahoma, All-American Gabe Johnson. In sixth place, from King, All-American Trent Mahoney. In fifth place, from Pitt Johnstown, All-American Nathan Smith. In fourth place, from Gannon, All-American Dominic Means. In third place, from Adams State, All-American Noah Hermosillo. Your runner-up at 157 pounds from UND All-American, Logan Bailey. And your 157-pound national champion from St. Cloud State, Nick Novak. We are back for the finals at 174 pounds. The number one seed from St. Cloud State, Abner Romero, is 20-0 on the season. He'll be taking on number three, Austin Eldridge of Nebraska Kearney, 27-4. Of St. Cloud State. He is a three-time All-American. Abner Romero is a national champion previously for Lindenwood University in 2021. Eldridge out of Kearney. Nebraska Kearney, your three seed. Abner over here sporting what I believe to be Rulon Gardner's. Rulon Gardner's shoes. Those are, he's got some money on his feet right there, sir. Those are like, uh, like a hot commodity nowadays. Found himself some old shoes. I like that black and gold. Gotta love it. Here comes Austin Eldridge. Austin Eldridge from Nebraska Kearney, coached by Dalton Jensen. Former Iowa boy there, went to Iowa State. Andrew Sorensen, assistant coach, also an Iowa State Cyclone alum. He's a three-time national qualifier, two-time fourth place finisher. Your Three-time All-American. St. Cloud State now has third place wrapped up, so this match doesn't mean much for the team standings. Well, it always does, just to, just to put icing on the cake, but both men redshirt seniors, so they are uh, going out in the top two spots. You know, and that being said, Matt, Eldridge right away in on a shot on the edge of the mat. Abner fending it off. He's trying to fight his way out, but there is two, and they call it. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but this uh, this Eldridge looks massive 
for 174. I don't know if Abner has been a 74 pounder previously, but certainly Eldridge looks to have a slight size advantage. Eldridge, he's a, he's a monster on top in the top position. This is where he likes to be. You know, we'll see if he he yeah, can build you can some tell riding with time. Those long arms and that tight waist. He's he's looking to take away Abner's arm and go to work. Abner working hard on a tripod stand up, and he's to his feet. Now, can he get away, or will Eldridge put him back down? Nice mat what, return. Dalton Jensen in high school. I remember him from the high school days. He was a pinner. He was a dominant wrestler on the mat. So. To no surprise that one of his lopers is uh, an aggressive mat wrestler. <laughs> this Austin Eldridge is, he's a specimen out there. He's a nice looking 74 pounder. Yeah, he's, he's not small at all. He's got shoulders that reach halfway across the room. He, little Gramby roll there by Romero. And he's got the, the he's got a Peterson kind of locked up, but uh, Abner Eldridge did a nice job undefeated. staying with him. Needs a, needs a return there. Nice, beautiful lift. Beautiful mat return right there. You know, already a minute, 10 riding time. Previously, Eldridge in 2021 was at 184 pounds. Last year, I believe 174. Both years a fourth place finish. So, you know, this, this is a big uh, step up for him to come out here, make the finals, and you can see in, in his style of wrestling that he's looking to finish out his career on top. It, make no mistake about it, Abner Romero, returning national champ. He knows what it's like to be in the finals. He knows how to win. He's undefeated on the season. He is not going to go down easily. And That's he's looking right now for the reversal. Abner Romero with a great switch to a reversal. He ties the match up on Eldridge. A minute and 30 seconds of riding time for Eldridge. 40 seconds left in the period. And he's, he's even looking for a turn. Yeah, I didn't see that coming, you know. I'll tell you what. Abner Romero, you, you can just tell that he's comfortable in big matches. I mean, he, he got taken down and ridden for a minute and a half, had no problem finding a reversal, and he looks comfortable as can be. This is a big 30 seconds right here. This this 30 seconds uh, could dictate what happens later on yeah, in that match. Choices, you know, you know the, the race, pace of the match. Everything. Racing this, riding time, you know, trying to, you know, getting a lead going in that second period or, Certainly you know, it's important for both men. Romero, nice mat return. Nice. And you could just tell, man, Romero, he's found his comfort zone here. Getting that reversal. He, he's felt out Eldridge. And ultimately, this is, uh, this is big on Eldridge to respond after that. You know, you don't want that momentum shift to change the entire um, duration of the rest of the match. And he goes down again. Uh, so, you know, he's, his coaches are feeling confident and making him confident that he can get out and continue to build his lead. Advantage, riding time still, Eldridge. Eldridge holding on to that leg. Kind of a, a, not quite a reaching back, but he's kind of trying to run him over, I think. He's searching for that far ankle. Romero with a partial leg in. Yeah, it looks very extended. Not much happening. They stalemate it. You know, I know a lot of talk is, is trying to change college wrestling more towards freestyle. But I tell you what, I love this this riding that you do you see in folk style. You just the it's challenge, Justin, is that for the intense fan, this is really, really exciting. But for the casual fan, they don't always know what's happening and I think just awareness and helping people understand how important these situations are and and get into it is really helpful to build the environment and the culture of the fan base around you know Romero really like wrestling. really likes that 
that Matt return of, of stepping through and, and, and tripping that far ankle, and uh, I mean, he's really doing a great job controlling his hips on the way down. You want to talk about the base, the, the base for the dominance of wrestlers in UFC. It's right here. It's Matt wrestling. Controlling people on the mat um, for mixed martial arts. And Abner Romero, I mean, not he's... A, not only is he is he erasing all the riding time and, and, and getting a tough ride, but you can kind of see mentally, I think it's challenging Eldridge a lot here. Right here. A tricky situation because uh, and he turns him down I was just gonna say if Romero doesn't make progress you know it starts to look like he might be stalling and, and they call it but I tell you what both men oh, have wow. worked look at this and Eldridge, look at this oh my goodness to oh my back, goodness but he hasn't settled in yet oh that is close and I and think you might two back we may and then oh, another you're gonna reversal. you're gonna see a brick get thrown here I think Matt you're going to see a brick get thrown here. So how are they calling this? He's throwing the brick, Romero, and there it is. Romero wants that brick bad. He does not believe that he was reversed I, and gave up back points. This might be a long uh, look here because I, I don't know. I saw one count, but then I, I felt like they maybe the back maybe went. What's what's going to make 90? the difference on this call is at what point they determined that there was in fact a reversal he was on his back absolutely he was arching through at what point was eldridge in control at what point are they calling it a reversal and then is that enough time to then as you stated count and even one two for the back points so what we're looking at here folks it was two to two. We had a reversal and two near fall called for Eldridge and then a reversal called for Romero's, which would mean a six to four advantage with Romero view, having the choice in the third period. Someone in a booth somewhere else is looking at this, at this move. As the new rules are, so our Matt official is actually on the phone talking to someone in the booth who's reviewing this. This was, I would not want to officiate that scramble. I'd love to see it. You know, I'd love to I, see a monitor in front of us right now. I personally, I, I, I think that they called it well. There was a lot of question, and you're never going to get it perfect. But, in fact, Eldridge got the reversal. Romero tried to roll through, and Eldridge held him there. And, you know, one, two, really isn't that much time. Now, also, take note, we have 56 seconds of riding time. For Abner Romero with the reversal either way he's likely to get the rever he's got the reversal down so he's gonna if they take away that too not only confirmed so we have a reversal we have two back points and we have another reversal and that is to end the period Romero chooses neutral and here we go Wow. Talk about an exciting second period. You know, so, and with the riding time advantage, technically all we, all Romero needs is a takedown and a ride out to win this match. Yep. So to get but the riding time. Eldridge already has the lead. No stall calls. He got the first takedown in the match. Everything else that's happened has been on the mat. We have three reversals in this match. So... Romero's going to have to figure out a way to score here, and he is moving well, but Eldridge oh, onto wow. a single, going high, looking for the cradle. He's got to get strong here. If he can get strong here, and you can see Romero looking to peek out, this is wild. There's, There's two, two, absolutely. And we're going to backs. We are going to backs. He, you think he's going to go for the fall here? He's just going to hold him there. I think he's going to take his time. There he goes. So now he let go of the cradle. Now the question is, can he unhook his leg? Can he tee up? He's got a four count here. There's the four count. And, you know, that you got to imagine that that about does it. I, I don't I don't see Romero. This match has taken a turn. Wow, it was two to two. 
just a few moments ago, Romero with choice, and all of a sudden we had a reversal back points, and now another six-point move. Austin Eldridge going to be your national champion here, I think, if he holds on, beating the defending national champion. What a great match. That, that I would probably call that the most exciting match. Two Iowa coaches here in the corner. Andrew Sorensen awesome. and Dalton Jensen. Dalton Jensen is excited. A great win by Eldridge. From fourth to fourth to first, he beats an undefeated Abner Romero, claims the 2023 national title at 174 pounds. Great sportsmanship there from Abner Romero coming across. Coach taking the coach's hand, blowing kiss to the to his fans. Very classy, Abner Romero. But look at this, folks. Austin Eldridge jumping into his coach's arms. He's your 174-pound national champion from Nebraska, Kearney. Congratulations, Austin Eldridge. Austin, congratulations, national champion, 174 pounds. You've now All-American three times, fourth at 184, fourth at 174, now first. Take us through that sequence there in the third period um, and what you needed to do mentally to ice that match. Um, I just had to trust my conditioning, my technique, my coaches. Um, just so much support in me, you know, it's, I just wanted to do it for them, you know. You come from a storied program, Nebraska Kearney. You won the national title as a team last year. Obviously not this year, but you're the finalist. What's it mean to, to show up for your team? Uh, it means the world. I, I just have so much support in the stands. You know, my coaches, my teammates, my family, my girlfriend. I just owe it all to them. And, you know, I, I, I had the easy job of coming out and wrestle, so. Well, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. 174 pound national champ. In eighth place from Mount Olive, first All American in school history, All American Mike Verna Gallo. In seventh place, from St. Cloud State, All-American Anthony Herrera. In sixth place, from West Liberty, All-American Alec Cook. In fifth place, from Gannon, All-American Alex Ferencheck. In fourth place from Lander, All-American David Hansberger. In third place from the University of Central Oklahoma, All-American Ty Lucas. And your 165-pound runner-up from Western Colorado, All-American Hunter Mullen. Your 165-pound national champion from Upper Iowa, All-American Chase. We are back for the finals at 184 pounds. We have Logan Hall out of Lander. And he will be wrestling Ty McGeary out of West Liberty. 
number four versus number two seed. We are ready to wrestle. Logan Hall, he's a senior, 33 and three on the season. He's a two-time national qualifier, one-time All-American. He's actually a grad assistant. Austin, he's Ty McGeary. He's a junior with a 26 and one record from West Liberty. He's your number two seated wrestler. He's a returning All-American placing third a year ago. Two-time national qualifier and a two-time All-American himself. The Hilltoppers from Lander. Excuse me, the Hilltoppers from West Liberty. Landers, the Bearcats. R.C. LaHaye, the coach, previously of Grand Canyon. He made his way to Lander just a few short years ago. And boy, have they made a rise. They are currently sitting in second. They will finish this tournament in second place as a team as essentially uh, one of the freshman teams to this division. Ty McGeary wearing the red ankle band. Logan Hall in the green ankle band. Logan Hall, a two-time qualifier. His first year as an All-American. Had a lot of great matches here tonight, man. I'm, I, you know, I'm uh, biased, but the last two, 100%, the, the most exciting we've seen yet, which has been fun. And we had Chase Lundsman, who is a hometown boy, won in exciting fashion, a lot of, a lot of points scored, and then Austin Eldridge just absolutely showed up for his end of the season. Ty McGeary, 26 and one. Logan Hall, 33 and three. You know, Coach R.C. LaHaye, you know, you said he, he coached at Grand Canyon. They made the transition to Division One a few years back. They dropped the sport of wrestling, kind of landed himself here at Lander. You know, and unfortunately, uh, uh, it's, it's very Landers. unfortunate, but we've seen that with multiple Division II programs that have converted to, to Division I. They've lost out on wrestling to, you know, cut their budget or, or whatever is necessary. And But on the bright side, you know, Division II wrestling, is, is the, it's the fastest growing division. There's a lot of new colleges that have, you know, started programs here in the last five, six years, Lander being one of them. And look at already – Second in the, in the country, pretty impressive. You know, with a pretty commanding lead over the third place South, or excuse me, uh, St. Cloud State Huskies. Lander qualified nine and All-American six. Central Oklahoma qualified 10 and All-American nine. These top two programs, they showed up. A nice snap, dropped into a leg. Got him McGeary. in that crackdown position here. Let's see if he can pull him, keep him in bounds, and get that right arm across there. But, uh, you know, he did a nice job staying tight there. Well, West Liberty fans are loud up there. This is what I kind of love about this. Uh, you know these some of these smaller colleges. You know these, there's such a there's such a community involved with you know tightness involved with all well, these 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 small smaller you know venues where it's more intimate. You can hear these big cheers. You can't always hear that at the bigger you know the Division One tournaments. You can hear some, but these guys they uh, they get loud and they get excited. 
you know, Cedar Rapids is a great place. It's kind of a centrally located between, you know, a lot the Adams states, the Shadron states, you know, from the for the schools out west, the Colorado Mesas, and you got all the schools out east in Ohio, Pennsylvania, you know, Oklahoma, in, in the Midwest. You know, Iowa is a good central location. Like I said earlier, they got to they got to have yes, keep we coming to, back here. We need to get some more Division two programs here in the state. We have one in Upper Iowa and Upper Iowa, the only Division two program in the state of Iowa. But they will go home with a national champion at 165 pounds. McGeary picking down. We are scoreless. The first, you know, a lot of uh, probing, a lot of small attempts. No major scoring opportunities yet for either wrestler. McGeary immediately to his feet. Something we failed to mention. Logan Hall from Lander, he has a win over the number one seeded wrestler Higgins from Nebraska Kearney, three to two in the semifinals. McGeary with a win over the number two seeded wrestler, six to five in the semifinals. So both of these men coming off upset victories. Logan we, Hall looking for underhooks. Nice drop down. Nothing transpired here for Hall. He's looking, and I tell you what, these big, these West Liberty fans, they're gonna they're gonna cheer their boy on to a takedown here eventually. Logan Hall continues to to look for reattacks. You know what? You know what's crazy, Matt. We are at 184 pounds, and there has not been one number one seeded wrestler win the national championship yet tonight. And this, yeah, it's not going to happen here because neither one here. of these wrestlers are seated. But that you don't see to that. Show you the brutality of this tournament, and you know how how razor thin the margins are um, at this Division two level. That's what I, I when I coached at Division three. That's what I loved about it, and I always told the athletes. The the talent gap is not the same as it is at Division One, but the work ethic and the commitment gap is different. And if you can put in the work, you have a world of opportunity at Division Two and Division Three, and they're proving it right here. These wrestlers, the one that wants it more, will go get it. You know, Central Oklahoma, they might have something to say about those number one seeds. They've got two of them coming up here at 97 and heavyweight. One to zero match. Start of the third period. After those last two, we're kind of uh, we're kind of stumped here. It's it's we're back we're back to a chess match, which again, you know this this is nice stand up there. Very common in the finals. Both wrestlers not letting up. No mistakes check out the riding time over there man zero second advantage either wrestler both with about a six or seven second escape i'm waiting for the mcgeary there they are the mcgeary cheers coming back they want to cheer their boy you know hall hall honestly has, has made more attempts at the legs he's got a little closer but there's there's a shot on mcgeary only one arm builds back up It'd Neither, be a pretty I don't think either one of these guys has gotten their hands locked on the leg. It would, I, I'm, I think it's safe to believe when someone gets something locked up, you know, they're going to work work to finish. And very, both men very conservative, have not let themselves get out of position. Safe to say the first takedown of this match is probably going to be your national champion. I see this one going mind to you, overtime. Yeah, I, I don't say, know. Mind you, we have not gone to overtime yet tonight. So that would be pretty exciting, which is relatively surprising. Um, you know, not have a single one in seven finals matches. Now we're on to number eight. There hasn't been a one-sided match all night. Man, both of these men dropping down just looking for a snatch of the leg neither one materialized anything we got 15 seconds left yeah i mean your guess is as good as mine any man could win this right now on, 
We're going to go to overtime. Sudden victory, folks. Neither of these men have backed down, but whoever wills it, wants it, is going to win this match. It's going to it's going to have to be someone going out of their comfort zone, making a hard attempt at a leg and following through with it. Again, just another. neither neither wrestler can get past that head and hands defense, no. and you know, they're, they're both wrestlers. They're, they're getting a little slippery out there great. too. Yeah, right, right I mean, there you saw it. Both of these guys with great penetration steps. It, McGeary just drops down, but he fights his way back up. Both of these guys. I'll tell you what. There, there's a hands lock. Here we go. This might be it. This might be it. McGeary gets his hands locked. Hall. Hanging on on his side. If he can hook that leg with He's his leg. He's got the crotch lift position. Now McGeary. There it is, Miami there it hooks is. Hooks the leg. Crossface will do this, and they call it. Ty McGeary, your national champ at 184 pounds, 26 and one out of West Liberty. A lot of emotion right there, wow. It's a and he is only a junior. You got to give it to him. He, he was the aggressor in that overtime period. You know, yes, he, he was. Ty McGeary, 184-pound national champion from West Liberty. We'll be back in Cedar Rapids, Iowa in about two minutes. Ty McGeary, national champ, 184 pounds tonight. Talk about a battle. I believe you are the first match tonight to go to overtime. Talk about what made the difference in that overtime period. You both had some opportunities, but obviously you capitalized there at the end. Just keep attacking. Every day in practice, you get tired. You think about that moment right there. I mean, there's no better way to win it than overtime. You are, you are a junior. You are coming back for your senior year. What are you looking to do next year? Same thing. Nothing's changed. I'm looking to come back. You got a crowd up there. I think I heard McGeary chance the whole match. What did that mean to you to win in that match with them cheering you on? I mean, they've been through everything with me. Every practice, every 6 a.m. They're just a part, big a part of this as me. It's awesome. Congratulations. Enjoy it. It's time to meet our All-Americans at 174 pounds. In eighth place from Ashland, All-American Nate Barrett. In seventh place from the University of Central Oklahoma, Anthony Devine. In sixth place from Western Colorado, All-American Cole Hernandez. In fifth place from the University of Mary, All-American Max Bruss. In fourth place from Lake Erie, All-American James Penfold. In third place from Fort Hayes State, All-American Cade Lindsay. Your 174-pound runner-up from St. Cloud State, All-American Abner Romero. And your 174-pound national champion from the...
Cedar Rapids, Iowa, folks. This is the home of the 2023 Division II NCAA Wrestling Championships. I'm here with former Iowa Hawkeye legend Matt McDonough. I tell you what, it's a pleasure to be working with you. Two-time national champion, three-time NCAA finalist. He's calling the action with me. I tell you what, it is. I'm honored to be sitting next to you, Matt. Oh, this is great. You know, these tournaments, this is a culmination of years and years of work for these athletes. And it's just, it's great to see him lay it on the line out here. Taking the mat right now, we're at 197 pounds. From Indianapolis, Derek Bluebaugh, 33 and 2 record, your number two seed. Got to appreciate the song he came out to, Mr. Blue Sky. Some of these. And then we got Flower by Moby. I always, I always was a fan of the walkout songs. Kind of a, a reflection of someone's mentality and their one chance to, to give a little insight into maybe, you know, what, what spurs them on, what their thought process is. And, you know, be a little lighthearted. We got, Abney. we got a lot of history here. Taking the mat now in the green ankle band is Dalton Abney from Central Oklahoma. They're your team champions this year. But his, this is his third finals appearance. He is a defending national champion. Blue Ball from Indianapolis was his NCAA finals opponent a year ago. Three-time finalist. Dalton Abney wrestling the man he wrestled in the NCAA Finals a year ago. And get this, they have split this year. One this and one this year. The first and only one versus two seed in the finals, I believe. First, you bet. First one versus two seed. No one seeds have won yet tonight. Dalton Abney looking to become your first. Be a little bit of icing on the cake for Central Oklahoma with, the with an individual champ here. Oh. Ran away with the team championship. Nine All-Americans. These two both heavy hands, big clubs. It's kind of like Clash of the Titans here. The Broncos from Central Oklahoma, coached by Todd Steidley, Scott Chenoweth, and Zachary Moore. Congratulations to that coaching staff on a terrific weekend here in Cedar Rapids. Derek Bluebaugh, coached by Jason Worth and Brad Bubrek, Ivan Lipchinski, and Royce Decker. Abney's been here before. You know, he's been on the big stage, three-time finalist. Big, big knee brace there. I'm one, you know, makes you wonder there, you know, what he's got going on health-wise out there. Abney had a tough semifinals match. One in overtime over Murphy from St. Cloud State. I believe Abney and Bluebaugh actually wrestled in the Super Region Finals with Abney coming out on top. So he does have the most recent win, and it was at the, the regional, hence the number one seed. But Bluebaugh Blue Ball now... Knows how to beat him. You know, they met in the finals last year, but Blue Ball beat him during the season. There's a shot. And we Both. got some. A lot of fans, you know, going bantering back and forth here, trying to get these wrestlers. Yeah, there's a strong Oklahoma contingent. And as we both know, Oklahoma loves wrestling with Oklahoma State, OU, and Central Oklahoma University. He's in on the leg. If he can drag him back in bounds here. That was a great sequence. A lot of motion, a lot of circling. Blue ball found his way, but what, really what he needs to do is right here, pull him in. Just keep dragging him back in. I, his short time... He's trying to reach over the head. Look at the flexibility there by uh, 
That's Abney. But power, both men scrapping there, no score. That was a good period. You saw the athleticism there from Abney. You know, that's a. Yeah, I tell you what, Blue Ball wasn't. Uh, there was. And Blue Ball chooses neutral. So essentially, third period, if there's no score at third period, Dahl Debbie could choose down and. Interesting choice there. You know, you don't see many 97 pounders. You know, and without seeing the previous matchups, maybe we don't know about right. the, the ability of one versus the other to ride and escape. Um, and, and, you know, maybe the coach has said something there in that first period at the end that he's got an opportunity and he's wearing on Abney. Tell you what, the great staggered stance by Abney, keeping him at distance, staying low. Both men here staying in great position. You know, shout out to the officials here tonight. They've done an outstanding job in every match. There was a couple tough matches to yeah. call earlier on. You know, I, I feel like they've just pretty much, you know, got every call right tonight. You know, they've just done a great job. And it's there. They have no easy position out there. It's a lot on the line for these guys. The officials tonight have done a great job. I, I completely agree, and you know that's not always the case. And they have a they have a tough job, and we hold them to a high standard. But ultimately tonight they have done as much as they can, right? And there really haven't been a lot of major controversies. It's a very defensive match. Thirty you know, seconds left, and blue ball has the only. You know, real close to, you know, takedown there. He, you know, he threatened him I early. I have to wonder with that knee brace, you know, how um, how confident Abney is taking aggressive shots off of that right leg. And he, he really has been leading the right leg most of the match too. So penetrating off that knee may not be very easy for him. And he goes down right away. So here's the question. Is blue ball going to try to ride him it looks like from the corner his coaches are saying forward pressure they want him to give it an attempt and this could ultimately decide the match blue ball rides for a minute abney gets out we're one one blue bra rides him out we win abney gets out inside of a minute and blue ball has to get here we go you can see abney is not taking his time on bottom he is working extremely hard but that knee, I don't really feel it's bothering him, though. I see he you feels know, he winced there on the bottom, but he's still moving. It might just be a pain thing. Blue ball pulls him out. You know, that's a good 24, 24 seconds right seconds. there. Again, he rides him for 59 seconds, and Abney gets out, and Abney's winning the match. There's a lot of strategy going on right now with this both of these a, guys. Yeah, this is definitely... Uh, chess match here clash of the titans abney oh, moving he, right away he almost jumped the whistle there Blue that was close. almost locked his hands and these guys i mean and there's the escape 34 seconds so now you're gonna see blue ball have to go at him abney won last year six to zero in the national finals and he could be the first number one seed to win but Blue Ball is not going down without a fight. Nice circling by Abney. That was huge. The clock's still ticking, and now Blue Ball is with his butt to the edge. 52 seconds to go here. Abney with a 1-0 advantage. You know, I, and I, you, you know, Abney doesn't have a stall call. You, you got to foresee he's just going to stay in that center, stay low, and hand fight hard. Blue ball, though, he's making attempts. Again, nothing where his hands have got locked on a leg. If he wants to win this match, he has got to get in deep. And just great defense by Abney. There's going to be a stall call. Yep. There's a stall call. So there's 20 seconds left. There's a stall call. 
Abney has to hold center. If he backs out, I mean, there could very likely be a stall call, but, man, he digs right in on those double unders. Talk about a great way. Here it is, there's your national champion. Dalton Abney, looking up at the Central Oklahoma crowd. He's your individual champion. They're the team champions. He's a returning champion, two-time champion. 197 pound Dalton Abney. Congratulations to you and the Central Oklahoma team on an outstanding weekend. Dalton, second year in a row, you're the national champ at 197 pounds over a common opponent. Um, as someone who's had a lot of matches with the same athletes, tell me about what it's like to, to have so many matches against a common opponent. I mean, I think that's the eighth, maybe ninth time me and Derek have wrestled, and he always comes at me hard and makes sure that I'm on top of my game, because if I'm not, he's going to beat me. He did beat me at national duels this year. Came out unprepared. Wasn't ready to fight, wasn't ready to give it everything I had, and it cost me. So, in my mind, it's good that I have someone that I can wrestle that much. It keeps me on my toes, allows me to keep working as hard as I need to work to be successful as I want to be. You come out here, you're the first number one seed tonight to win a national title. You and your teammates put nine on the podium. You won a national title. What does it mean to win a national title for your team and also have a team title. Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, look, look at all these fans we got. I mean, they don't get, they don't get any better than that. We had brought 10 here at nine All-Americans, set a school record. I mean, how could you not have fun being a part of that? It's awesome. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. In eighth place, from Upper Iowa, All-American Coulter By. In seventh place, from Wisconsin Parkside, All-American Reese Waracek. In sixth place, from the University of Nebraska, Kearney All-American Billy Higgins. In fifth place from the University of Central Oklahoma, All-American Alex Kaufman. In fourth place from Kutztown, All-American Matt Weinberg. In third place from Ashland, All-American Daniel Beamer. Your 184-pound runner-up from Lander, All-American Logan Hall. And your 184-pound national champion from West Liberty, all Last match of the night here, folks. We're at heavyweight. Your national championship match, Division Two. 
Cedar Rapids, Iowa, here at the Alliant Center Powerhouse. In the red corner, from Glenville State out of West Virginia. He's a sophomore with a 32-1 record, Jared Campbell. He's going to be taking on an undefeated wrestler from, you guessed it, Central Oklahoma. We just saw Dalton Abney win a national title at 197. Sean Streck looking to make back-to-back national champions for Central Oklahoma. He's coming in 25-0. He's a junior, Sean Streck. He'll be wearing the green ankle band. Sean Streck, he's a Purdue transfer, actually placed in the Big Tens a few years back, went 2-2 two and two at the Division I National Tournament a few years back, actually got beat out of the tournament by Iowa Hawkeye Sam Stoll. He took sixth here in Division II a year ago, actually had to default out of the tournament. Believe it or not, with these these two's impressive resumes, we have a redshirt sophomore out of Jared Campbell and a redshirt junior out of Streck. Now, both of these guys already have teammates who are national champions. I got to so, give it up to the fans here. There hasn't been many people leave. You know, there's uh, for for heavyweight match. You you know how it is. You see, got people leave going home early. Not a lot of empty seats hey, still in the two building. Of the, two of the best matchups in the tournament. It also helps that the national champion team has their two finalists at 197 and heavyweight. You know they're not going anywhere. Central Oklahoma has traveled well, taken up multiple sections in the arena. That's some big legs on these guys right here. Can tell Streck is extremely strong. He got here with a six to three win over Green from Wachita Baptist. Jared Campbell with a major decision over unseated Caleb Gray of Indianapolis in the semis. Good snap by Streck. You always see past Division I wrestlers come into these tournaments, and it's not automatic, but a lot of them do well. You have to imagine there's there's a little bit of pride factor in knowing that they have that experience under their belt of wrestling at, you know, another level um, and coming in here and wanting to make sure and prove that they are, uh, they are that good, in fact. And, you know, Streck, he's, he's done that, and he's only a junior this year. He's an All-American last year. He's in the finals this year. He was a national qualifier in the Division I level. He, uh, yeah, you look at both he's these. strong. And then, you know, you got Campbell, the second All-American ever for Glenville State, and also the second finalist. That's pretty exciting. And, you know, he, he has a teammate who won the first national title. He could be the second person to win a national title for his school. And that's, that's extremely meaningful. Central Oklahoma, both their 97 and heavyweight back. You know, they're both juniors. You know, obviously they got a strong team coming back. Nice low single there by Campbell. Let's see if he can finish, if he can bring this up in the air. Oh, and when he, oh, nice reattack there by Streck. Did a great job getting his hips away and then reattacking right into that single leg. Beautiful. Short time. The coaches are looking for this last 15 second ride out here. I love watching these coaches that have been around the block for so many years, just showing all the energy in the corner like that. These Central Oklahoma coaches are just 
fully engaged in this match. Streck chooses down, up two to zero with 29 seconds riding time. That turn. Uh, he, looks com he looks well composed and strong. Nice quick stand up. Six second escape. You know, Campbell got to that low single and uh, you, you like to think he's probably going to try to try to fire off a few shots here to get back in this match. But, uh, you know, you know as well as I, three to zero lead at heavyweight. It's tough to score points in these, in these upper weights. So more much strength. And more and more you see heavyweights that are extremely athletic, quick, fast twitch, and certainly you have one other one in, in Streck here. Um, you know, for Campbell, he, he's got to figure out a way to get to him. You know, he, he's gritty. He's keeping himself in the match, but he has got to find some openings. 50 seconds to go, second period. A lot of hard, heavy hand fighting right now. Central Oklahoma looking for their second NCAA champion of the night. It's been a pretty even split amongst a lot of Division II programs that have had champs tonight. But Central Oklahoma looking to get their second. Oh, just kind, tell you what. kind of a poor shot there by Campbell. Streck just looks extremely comfortable. He, he looks very comfortable, very at home here in this match. Yeah, I think that's a good call right there. You know, he just kind of ran him out of bounds a little bit there. I mean, it was... Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't – keeps him honest. It's, yep, yep. it's not necessarily going to change the entire course of the match. It's a five-point lead um, with 42 seconds of riding time, but it keeps him honest. And you certainly see that a lot at heavyweight, and I think the refs have to do that to make sure that these matches don't turn into a push-out chess match. Streck starting on top. For the third, Campbell down. Campbell has yet to score any points. Streck just under a minute of riding time. So now he holds a five to one lead with 50 cents, 56 seconds of riding time over Campbell. Campbell's gonna have to make some magic. Minute 30 to go. Your last bout of the night, folks. We've had some great matchups. Extremely competitive all the way through tonight. Been an exciting environment. Uh, oh, I think he got poked in the eye there or uh, something happened. Maybe a headbutt, potentially. Well, we have a minute and 10 seconds to go in our last match of the night. Sean Streck leading five to one with a minute to go. He has looked dominant so far in this match and really in this tournament and another re-attack, but he doesn't quite capitalize. He's in again and he gets the takedown on Campbell. Talk about ice in a match. You know, he, he got to that low single early on. He went, he tried going back to it twice. The bad thing, if you don't get to the leg, you know, you got to get the heck out of there yeah, right away. Especially at heavyweight. You, you get caught underneath with that big body on top of you, and it's hard to move. And they call. This, this might be the most dominant, convincing win of the night. You know, we did have a fall early, but that, that match was 0-0 at the time of that cradle. This is probably the most one-sided match we've Straight had of the finals. Ground, you know. The way he's been wrestling, he could he could score one more takedown just to kind of. But hats off to Campbell. He's he's not going down lightly. He's he's kind of running Streck all over the mat right now. Less than ten seconds to go. Sean Streck, 
Central Oklahoma. He's your heavyweight national champion. The winner of eight to three. Once again, they are your team champions. Two individual champions. We've had a great night of wrestling here tonight, folks. Cedar Rapid has been a wonderful place to host the Division II championships. Big congratulations to Central Oklahoma for winning the team championship. Lander for placing second. Western, excuse me, St. Cloud State finishing in third and Western Colorado finishing in fourth. Those are your team trophy winners of the night. He's a first junior, your national champ this year, All-American last year. You were a Division I NCAA qualifier. You have a wealth of wrestling knowledge and experience. Tell me about what that played into um, tonight in your match. Uh, I've been in those positions that I've wrestled just now probably a thousand times. Thankful for, to my practice partners, my coaches, and anybody around me who's putting me in those positions. Thank you to my family, my friends, my girlfriend, her family, and thank you to UCO. If it wasn't for UCO, I wouldn't be here. You're the second national champ for UCO tonight. Obviously, the last one is uh, going to the award stand right now. What's it like to have a, a teammate like that right around your weight to, to battle with and to push you and, and a, an entire team of All-Americans to, to drive you every day? Oh, it's awesome. He's one of my best friends. We room every tournament. Every time we travel, we're together. We practice together all the time. If it wasn't for Dalton, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Man, it's tough as hell on top. Awesome. Congrats to you and your team. Have a great night. Hands up. In seventh place from Colorado Mesa, All-American Cash Anderson. In sixth place from McKendry, All-American Logan Kaveen. In fifth place from the University of Mary, All-American Matt Kaler. In fourth place from St. Cloud State University, All-American Dominic Murphy. In third place from Fort Hayes State University, All-American Tereus Henry. Your 197-pound runner-up from U Indy, All-American Derek Blueball. And your 197-pound national champion from the University of Central Oklahoma, All-American Dalton Abney. We're back here for one more minute here at the NCAA Division II National Championships. I'm Justin Decker. This is Matt McDonough. Wow, what a great night of wrestling. It was incredible. You know, we had 10 champs crowned tonight. Only two sets of pairs from the same school in Adams State. Brennan Garcia and Josiah Ryder and our 97 and heavyweight Dalton Abney, Sean Streck. Central Oklahoma ran away with it. Nine All-Americans, 100 and I don't even know how many team points. Um, Lander, brand new school, coming in, getting second, and then St. Cloud State fighting their way to third. Yeah, I think the two stories of the night, Central Oklahoma obviously with the team championship and the two individual champions, but also host school Upper Iowa, Chase Lunsman, coming in big win for the home crowd you know just wrestled a great high pace match that's big for the up university of upper iowa and 
The venue here has been outstanding. We've we've had a lot of great action-packed competitive matches. It was a good good for the sport of wrestling tonight. All around a great night, great wrestling. Hats off to your champs. We'll see you next year for our Division II National Championships. Matt McDonough and Justin Decker signing off. Have an all champions photo on the mat. So that's a reminder to our national champions as well. Stick around, there will be an all champions photo on the mat. I do believe we are waiting on the runner-up at 285 pounds. It is time to head to the podium. We are waiting on Jared Campbell of Glenville State. We need Jared Campbell to the awards area, please. I know it's a super quick turnaround, but if we could get you to head to the awards area for us. We are going to go ahead and get started with our All-Americans at 285 pounds. At 285 pounds from Minot State University, All-American Jake Swerpel. In seventh place, from the University of Nebraska, Kearney, All-American Lee Harrington. In sixth place, from Lander, All-American Juan Edmund Holmes. In fifth place from Washita Baptist All-American Johnny Green. In fourth place from U Indy All-American Kale Gray. In third place from Minnesota State, All-American Darrell Mason. Your 285-pound runner-up from Glenville State College, All-American Jared Campbell. Up. 
and your 285 pound national champion from the University of Central Oklahoma, All-American Sean Streck. NCAA Division II wrestling champions and to all this year's participants. Hey, you can't follow shit on track. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the team championship trophies to your top four teams as determined by an aggregate event score. Presenting the team awards is Mr. Cy Wainwright, committee chair of the D2 Wrestling Committee. We're going to win this bitch next year. Mark my words. Finishing in fourth place overall at this weekend's championship tournament with 61 points, the Mountaineers of Western Colorado. Accepting the award for Western Colorado is head coach Charlie Pfeiffer. Congratulations once again to the Mountaineers of Western Colorado. And now our third place team with 64 and a half points, the Huskies of St. Cloud State. Accepting the award for St. Cloud State head coach and team, Steve Costanzo. Congratulations once again to the Huskies of St. Cloud State. Three, 
And our runner-up team with 78 points, the Bearcats of Lander. Accepting the award for Lander is head coach R.C. LaHaye. One more congratulations to the Bearcats of Lander. Fans, are you ready for your team champions? All righty then, our NCAA Division II Wrestling Team Champions for 2023, winning their eighth team title with 121 points. That eighth team title ties an NCAA Division II record for most Team titles, the Broncos of Central Oklahoma. Accepting the championship trophy, head coach Todd Steidley. Congratulations to our 2023 national champions. Once again, the Central Oklahoma Broncos. 